This is Raylene. I wanted to give another update of what's going on in regard to the Maui fires. Today, there was an announcement that people could get in line to get placards who were residents or volunteers to get into the impacted area and beyond. There is currently very limited access and people are not able to get to their homes and they're concerned if they leave to get supplies, they won't be able to get back in. And so there was a system set up where people could go get this and for, you know, these identifying stickers and put them in their vehicles so they could get through the checkpoints in and out. Well, after waiting in line for hours and hours, they pretty much announced that right here, that now it is worthless. They're, they're re revoking the program and they're not going to use it anymore. It's going back to the old system. And we'll kind of move out of the way for you here to read that. So I'll take a <clears throat> screenshot if you want to read the rest of that. Public service announcement from the police department that due to the overwhelming demand, again, blaming the people, they're discontinuing the service so people no longer can get back in. In other updates, there's still active fires going on in the Kula area. They reignited last night with all of the winds that we're getting. Maui is generally very windy. And so this was set up today. My husband took this photo as he was doing, trying to get to his job and they are setting up perimeters. They're still trying to contain that fire. It is still very active. And I mean, if the if Lahaina wasn't on the news, this would definitely be in the news and it's getting overpassed because of all the media that's going on in Lahaina, which is very devastating. They're saying that this is going to be the largest um, death toll ever in modern history from a fire. So it, it and they're still, I think, saying that the death toll is under 100 and we're believing it's definitely over 1,000. Um, based on reports and just the number of missing people. The people still have not been able to find so many of their loved ones. Um, today, someone did mention that they found one, someone they were looking for today. So there might still be hope if you're missing people. There's so many people that lost their phones, so they just don't have a way to communicate right now. And then with reports coming out of Lahaina, I believe, again, if correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I'm just trying to share the information I'm receiving here on the ground from different sources but they do have enough supplies and they are getting dispersed to the people. There's some who are in their homes and said it would be helpful if people like were kind of going through neighborhoods because they don't have fuel, they haven't had electricity. A lot of the places still don't have running water. I know Kula was out of water for a while. I believe it's been restored. And so just limited access, limited communication. So there is probably a lot of people who actually need help or just they're not able to get to the distribution centers. Um, I feel like Maui, everyone has, Report, the outpouring of support has been really overwhelming and I feel like we're doing really good when it comes to supplies. My husband finally went to Costco today and the shelves are pretty stocked except for some, you know, main essentials like water and he wasn't able to get some things, but it's nothing, nothing that's a big deal at all. There are a lot of bodies that are um, extremely charred and so it's extremely difficult to remove them and they're, I think they're trying to take the utmost care. It is a very tricky situation here and that's why they're trying to keep people out of the city of Lahaina. I believe for the most part, I wanna have this like good part of my heart that believes that you know there's a part of people that actually do care and are trying to work for the people. And so they're trying to you know preserve and respect you know the, the, those that are deceased there by keeping people out. I feel like there's bypass roads so they could easily open up the road if people would respect that and kind of stay out of the cordoned off areas and be able to access their homes because there's huge resorts above Lahaina and many people who live up there and they're just limited in their access and people aren't able to get to work. It, it's really creating a huge issue right now and I feel like the handling of this is completely chaos. Just like the implementation of this system earlier today and within, you know, what, 12 hours and they revoked it. They tried to open the roads before and within a few hours and they revoked it again. They don't know like what, it seems like they just don't know what's going on and we're getting a lot of information from the local officials that are pushing you know the all these alternate agendas that have nothing to do with helping the people of Maui it seems like shifting the blame making sure to cover things up about what really happened and how people were getting like cordoned into the city in the middle of the flames during the fire instead of being let out because of road closures I did want to bring up something interesting I've had a few people say that it seems like our mayor and governor acting just like they did in Vegas when there was the Vegas catastrophe and there is a link here between our John 
Pelletier, who is serving as the Maui Chief of Police during these fires. He was also connected into Vegas. It's really interesting. I'll let you read that for a second there, take a screenshot of it. He worked in Vegas during all of the shootings and everything that went on there. So why do we find these same people kind of woven throughout all of these catastrophes over time? I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. I want you to go investigate. Tara, if you're learning anything about it, please put it in the comments. I think this is a time where we investigate, we ask questions, we stop taking things at face value and what we're being told by officials and media because there's definitely more to this story and it needs, it deserves to be investigated and we deserve to have answers and our questions answered. I, we did go out today and in Kihei and notice that everything is a lot calmer. There's not very many tourists, not nearly as many as there normally are. Here, I know that a lot of businesses are extremely stressed and worried about, you know, what's going to happen. Is this going to be another COVID situation where everything is shut down and they're losing their businesses? I feel like give Maui a few weeks and we'll see, you know, what people are wanting at that time as in regard to visitors and where where this, you know, the dust hasn't even settled. It's really raw and fresh for everyone, but I'm getting that question a lot. Should we still come? Um, I don't have an answer for you. I'm telling people to go within and try to find that answer for yourself. A lot of people are asking me what's the best way to help right now and I honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I've been recommending supporting the Maui Food Bank. They are delivering supplies and so giving them to the people without any of the red tape. A Maui Brewery Company is taking you know, donations and supplies and then Hungry Heroes Hawaii also. This is going to be a long-term cleanup operation. There already weren't enough skilled workers to take care of the properties that were already here, let alone trying to rebuild. I'm not sure how that process is gonna go, but I feel like it's gonna be long and slow. Um, this is a picture my husband took up in the Kula area today. He works on top of Haleakala. There's a lot of wind damage. You can see like giant trees are down and they're still having issues with power lines and trees going down because it's still windy. It's just windy here. And then we have two more hurricanes that are coming through the ocean. Not sure exactly how they're going to have an impact on Maui. Hopefully they bring a little bit of rain, but again, there's concern if there's too much rain, it could lead to you know runoff issues with all of these fires. So please just keep Maui in your thoughts, your prayers, and if you know anyone specifically who's been injured or has needs, please help them. And if you have ways that people could help, put it in the comments. Please vet everything because there's a lot of scams going on, people setting up fake accounts, fake sob stories, and they really actually weren't injured. Um, it is unfortunate, but this seems like a thing that happens every time there's a disaster. But there truly are people who have really been impacted. There's a family staying on the beach in a tent because FEMA said because they didn't own their house, they're not eligible for assistance. Yet my husband looked on the FEMA website and it said that they should be, so I'm not sure what the discrepancy is there, what's really the truth or not. If you have stories about FEMA, please share those as well. Let's get this all out in the open. We deserve to have these discussions. I have really been getting censored, so please share these videos. If you haven't seen my other ones, go check those out. Try to get the word out. We, the time is now. The time is now for this to get exposed, for us to see what's really happening behind the scenes, and I feel like the energy is there to support us in this. So that is my hope. <laughs> this is normally what I talk about, but I, I feel like I'm here and this is the time and the place to talk about it. So I hope you're well and I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much.